A ferry has long been a lifeline for the 150 people who live on Rathlin Island. And it became particularly vital for getting supplies to the residents over the last year. The islanders took the decision early in the pandemic to stop non-essential access to the island and only recently opened up again to tourists. So far, it's helped keep the island COVID-free and we've done two lateral flow tests before coming over to try and help keep it that way. One of the main draws for tourists is the chance to get close to puffins and other rarely seen birds. So I'm waiting for my guide Liam, warden of the island. He's lived here all his life and has promised me a glimpse of the birds. Hello! Hello, hey, Liam. must be Krista. <laughs> Did my big blue bus give it away? I'm afraid so. <laughs> You come and see the puffins? Yeah, they'd be lovely. Can I follow you? Yeah, follow me up to the Seabird Centre. Sounds great. All right, see you there. A puffin bus usually takes most visitors up to the site, but we have special permission for the Travel Show electric van. The Seabird Centre opened up here for the first time in a year and a half, just a couple of weeks before our visit and a viewing platform at the back shows the birds putting on quite a display. Are they all birds? Yeah, they're all over the place like little pebbles. I can't quite get my head around how many of them there are here. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> it is indeed. There must be hundreds of thousands of birds here. There is indeed. There's hundreds of thousands. There's about 140,000 guillemots alone. And you see how the flat top there is just completely covered in guillemots. There's, there's about seven or eight thousand guillemots just in that one area. For protection, they would like to be in close proximity to the others, so safety in numbers. So if you're nesting in the middle of that density over there, your chance of your egg and your chick surviving is much greater than if you're out on a, a lower ledge on your own, because they don't have to worry too much about land-based predators here, but there's always other birds. There's great black back gulls and there's ravens and things that you know will come along and, and take eggs. So. Uh, if you're in one of these places, you're better protected. But now it's time to find the star of the show, the puffins. If you look out for the orange feet, the first thing, it'll sort of bounce out at you, either on the bare soil or on the green grassy bits. It's down the bottom there. Oh, oh there they are. They're quite obvious. We're really looking for the feet. The nest underground, so at the minute there'll be one bird in there incubating an egg, and then the other one could be out its partner could be out feeding out at sea. And how has it been over the past year? Because you've had quite a unique experience here on Rutland Island. It was strange because you expect to hear a bus going up the road with people on it or something like that. It's not happening. It's just quiet. Saturday afternoon, there's not a voice to be heard anywhere, you know, <laughs> along the way. But you get used to it, you know, and it was quite nice. I think, I think that in some ways, everybody felt more relaxed for a year or for a season, <laughs> you know, because the summer can be quite busy for people doing all sorts of different jobs and facilitating all the people that come here and not having all that pressure meant that people were pretty laid back. And so it was like a chill out year, I suppose. And now that people are free like myself to come over on the ferry, I mean, is it nice to welcome people back to Rathlin? It's brilliant that they're coming here and having the opportunity to to get back to see what's what's on offer in Rathlin. The Travel Show, your essential guide wherever you're heading, every weekend on BBC World News.